Just don't take the floor. Mr. Ross. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I will speak in Dutch. Um, I would also like to I'd also like to know where Mr. Bula is, why he's not here with us today. Ms. Small, do you have any information? Do you have a mandate from Pfizer to speak freely and openly and answer our questions? You're not going into the content on the question of SMS gate that was raised by Ms. Trilene Noir. Now, you say that you want to avoid misinformation through better information, but this all begins with Pfizer itself. So, Ms. Small, by being transparent on your side. So I'm very curious to know what uh, the fact that uh, the CEO from Pfizer would say that they want to be transparent and then not show up at this commission. Mr. Bula is very interested in having billions of euros in profit on the backs of the EU citizens, but is not in provided, willing to provide an explanation. Mr. Bula was personally involved in contract negotiations via SMS with the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. This is why his presence would be absolutely crucial here. Now, the European Ombudsman, the European Court of Auditors have spoken on the consequences of the uh, scandal, and these are very damning. So I really think that Mr. Bula would need to be present and would need to do this in order to ensure full transparency in the process. So a question then for you, Ms. Small, where I would like a clear answer, please. So there are no misunderstandings. Was the Pfizer COVID vaccine tested on stopping the transmission of the virus before it entered the market? If not, please say it clearly. If yes, are you willing to share the data with this committee? And I really want a straight answer, yes or no, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ross. Mr. Valtteng. Um, regarding the question around, um, did we know about stopping immunisation before um, it entered the market? No. Uh, these, um, you know, we had to really move at the speed of science to really understand what is taking place in the market. And from that point of view, we had to do everything at risk. I think our Dr. Boudla, even though he's not here, would turn around and say to you himself, uh, if not us, then who? Um, Dr. Boudla actually felt the importance of what was going on in the world. And therefore, as a result of that, we actually um, spent $2 billion at risk uh, of self-funded money from Pfizer to be able to manufacture, as it, well, first of all, research, develop and manufacture at risk to be able to make sure that we were in a position to be able to help um, with the pandemic. And, uh, and I think that's why I feel very good when a recent paper um, from the Imperial College stated that in the first year of the rollout of, of vaccines, um, we saved... Uh, four million people. So from that point of view, I feel that uh, actually we were there when the world needed us to be able to make sure that we were able to help people around the world with, um, with vaccination as well as now oral, oral treatment. I would hate to imagine what situation we would be in in the world right now if companies like us did not take those risks did not um, do clinical research and developments at scale uh, in order to make sure that we could have a vaccine that we could roll out um, to the world. So I, really, I understand your frustrations, I really do. But I also hope that at some point, somewhere, you also do appreciate what um, pharmaceutical companies have done in order to be able to roll out and deliver vaccines at such speed and scale. Um, Regarding, sorry. Um, price. Oh, price, okay. Right, <laughs> sorry. It, honestly, it's on my notes. I just haven't got to it constantly. It is there, isn't it, pricing? Um, so, look, I understand you've talked a lot of pricing and thrown out a lot of prices, but from our point of view, we, we cannot discuss pricing. Pricing is confidential. And from that point of view, I know, again, you're going to be very frustrated. I can see it in your faces. You're going to be very frustrated with my answer. But pricing is confidential. And from that point of view, I am not able to have a conversation with you other than to repeat what has always been out there in that we have taken a tiered pricing approach to pricing to make sure that it is affordable for the governments to be able to ensure 
that uh, citizens can have it without out-of-pocket funding. And in addition to that, we've made sure that low- and middle-income countries are having it at not-for-profit. I understand your frustration, but we cannot discuss pricing. It is confidential. 